and welcome. My name is Dr. Jim Frankel, and I am the founder and director of Music First, and it gives me great pride to welcome you to our first ever online professional development conference titled Moving Forward Together. The goal of today's uh, conference is to provide you with some inspiration, some hope, and some real concrete ideas on what you can do with technology this fall, no matter what your teaching situation is. Just a couple of quick little housekeeping notes. All of the presentations today are pre-recorded videos. And the reason for that is that we had over 8,600 people sign up for this conference. And to make sure that there are no technical glitches or as few as possible, we've pre-recorded all of the sessions. There will be a Q&A section on the side of the Microsoft Teams interface, and you can post your questions there. If you have additional questions, you can always send them to info at musicfirst.com. The way it will work is you can go to a session. It will launch Teams into a live event. And if that's not the session that you thought it would be, you can leave that session, go back into the Music First classroom, click on the red home button in the upper left corner, go to the hour that is uh, relevant to the time of day that you're watching, and pick another session and click that link. Anyway, I hope you have a fantastic day, and uh, thanks again for spending it with us. At the very end of the conference, uh, there'll be an announcement from our marketing director, Rachel LaRue, and she'll be talking to you about how you can complete uh, a little quiz that will generate a professional development certificate for six hours of PD. Thanks again. Hope you have a great day, and more importantly, I hope you have a great school year. Take care. Hi, everybody. Tim Lassenheiser here. First of all, thanks to my friend Jim Frankel, all the good people at Music First for inviting me to share a couple thoughts with you. Uh, and I know we have people from all over. I understand there's more than 7,000 people that have tuned in to find uh, the answer of how to make gold out of water. One time I heard somebody say, the, the, how you make gold out of water? You, you boil water for two minutes without thinking hippopotamus. And of course, that's kind of the situation we're in right now, isn't it? Um, I know everybody's looking for the, the magic key or the, the secret potion that's going to take care of us in these uncertain times. And just to be real honest, the only thing that we really know, really know, is the fact that we're going to teach music. And music teachers, uh, <laughs> by design, are people who are persistent beyond belief. Um, that's a nice word for stubborn, yeah. That we're going to get it done one way or another. And whatever little crack in the cement we can get through, we're going to do it so we can make sure that young people have music. Because we know something. It makes life better. It makes life better for them. It gives them all kinds of advantages that other people don't have. And I can go on and on about the advocacy stuff, but you already know that. And the reason you've tuned in in the first place in this is because you're already to the altar, so to speak. You're the people that get it done. And that's why you're here. So a couple things. And this just comes from, you know, being around for a long time. First of all, uh, many of you know me, I'm not a keynote speaker. Keynote speakers bring you um, facts and data and all kinds of blueprints of what you should do. And uh, no, I'm a music teacher. I'm like you, uh, day in and day out, hoping to turn some kid on a little bit more to the advantages of learning music and making music and embellishing their lives. So um, I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint all of those of you who are waiting for some heavy research, it's not going to happen. I'm a drummer, which <laughs> even ups the ante a little bit more. Um, so I read one time uh, what a keynote speaker is. You know, it says, one who delivers a substantive message in a scholarly fashion. <laughs> not a prayer on that one. So I'm, let's, let's talk about you. Let's talk about how important you are and the things that, you know, are on your shoulders right now to get ready for the days ahead, regardless what they're going to be. 
And again, I think everybody wants the answer or the road sign or, or here's exactly what, there's no boilerplate on this. We're all shifting. It's like, a, it's like a, being a jazzer and not knowing what the chord changes are till the bar line hits. But again, that's what you're good at. <laughs> Excuse me. So over, over four decades of being a gypsy and running around this country, and maybe that is a kind of research. I never thought about that. But here's what I find. There's certain things that make good teachers good teachers in our profession. And, you know, music's different. And I, I hear this all the time. They go, well, you know, no, it's not. You know, music, it's just another class. No, it's not. It's a culture. You know that. I know that. And I would suspect that most of us that are paying any attention to this, you know, event that's going on right now, you're here because of a music teacher. I mean, we don't think about that. We just kind of accept that, don't we? You know, other people, like when they graduate and go to college, they, they are influenced usually by the subject matter. I want to be a math teacher. I want to be an engineer. I'm going to be pre-med. And you and I are there usually because of a music teacher. Somebody who said, you know, you're, you're pretty good at this. And we went, oh, yeah, we are. And they go, yeah, you, you ought to look at this more seriously. And maybe that meant taking lessons or practicing a little bit more or, or shifting the decision to stay in instead of leave like some of the friends did. And, 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 and if I said to you, that music teacher that was such an influence in your life to literally put you in a trajectory where you're doing what you're doing right now, if, if I ask you, how important was that person? And what did you get from them? What was, what was the really knockout punch? Was it what they taught you or was it the way they taught you? And you know what most of us are going to say? Yes, it should be both, yeah. But it was the way. And if you look at any other class in school, folks, you know, um, the English teacher gets so many they teach the course and whatever, you know, the English thing, whatever level it is, that class leaves next semester, another class comes in, teaches. That's not what we do. Our, our curriculum is moving. It's changing all the time. We have selection, right? Now, certainly there are some cornerstones that we hang on to. But again, we have, we have all kinds of space to do other things. And for those of you who, you know, hang out at that high school level and college level too, <coughs> all right, middle school, I guess, too. Well, elementary, I guess, too. Well, everybody, I guess. Our whole lives tend to be built around music. You know, the, the kids come to school in the morning and they hang out around the choir works for band hall. Yeah, that's where they, they're, they're lockers. They're outside those, you know, <laughs> that's where they come. That's where their friends are. You get passes, to get out of class, go down there and hang out, didn't you? And when you went to college, wasn't there that music lounge where everybody gathered and fussed about this or that, that professor? Or why are we taking this? Or how are we going to get through piano proficiency? Or it's different. Because we take the class, we check it off. Music all the time. And for you music teachers, you know, they may, get that, they may get that math teacher once or twice during that part of their educational journey. They get us sometimes every day. They spend more time with us sometimes than they do their parents. And lots of times that music family is safer than their own family. Now, is that the reason we should be teaching music? Of course not. We teach music because it's music. We teach it because it's a language you can't get anywhere else. And that's why it is so important right now. Because the obvious thing for most people to do would be shrug their shoulders and go, well, I can't because we've always done it this way. We have always done it this way. And how can I do that with all of these restrictions and firewalls? And well, there's our challenge, isn't it? And, you know, what's that great phrase that says, <laughs> the pessimist sees the challenge in every opportunity and the optimist sees the opportunity in every challenge. 
And if you and I can stand back far enough, we can actually see there's some things we can do that we probably wouldn't have done under normal circumstances. So for those of you who are still with me, let's lock arms and head forward. Because here's the things I, I found out. And I know we have teachers that from all levels here, which is like really hip. And maybe, maybe it was your elementary, I don't know, choir teacher or your general music teacher, whatever it was that triggered you. I always think about my high school choir teacher. Well, she was, I guess, our music teacher from first grade on in our little country school, Miss Sellers. Miss Sellers owned the school. You know, I think at the end, we, in our whole school, there was like 212, and that, that was like everything. And over 200 were singing. That was Miss Sellers. Now, I got to tell you, she wasn't the world's greatest musician. But she was a magical person. She ran the school. And you know what? It was just a given that you would take music. It was a given that you would be in the choir. Now, this is how important you are. When she left, it just unraveled. And the first year afterward, there was like 80 in, in singing. And then it was 42. And then it was 27. And, and there's file drawers full of great music that's not used. Because there's not a Miss Sellers anymore. You get it? It was her. So let's start here. I, nobody wants to talk about context. Everybody wants to talk about content. And, and I'm there, I'm there. I'm a you know, curricular goofball. I just think it's so important. But you know, having the blueprint without being able to build whatever it is, it make a lot of difference, doesn't it? So what is that magic? And we all know programs that are robust, yeah? They were just, they were doing everything right. And people were excited about it. administration was that parents were excited about it. And then that person retired or left. And once again, we have another Miss Sellers situation happening. So you got to look, what's the difference? Did the way we count change? Did the scales change? Did fingerings change? Did third position change? Did vocal technique change? Did, no. It was the teacher. It was the teacher that changed. Now, to show you how important, at least this context thing is, that everybody just kind of pushes to the side for more content, you know? Let's look at this. If you, I'm going to give you two students, gang. You have two students. This student over here is gifted, incredibly talented, way, I mean, just can do anything. Just has got, got it, right? This student over here that has the great talent also has a very negative, toxic attitude. Okay, that's student one. Student over here, student number two, is okay talent. You know, has to work at it, but okay talent. But just has this enthusiasm and positive attitude and is always eager to participate and learn and grow. Now, if I said, which one do you want? Most of us would want this one. We want the one who has the context that's easy to work with. The one who's already excited about it. But if you stand back, this one over here that has the great talent but the bad attitude, and you go, why would you want to work with that kid? Because you can't change the amount of innate talent a person has. I mean, what we have is what we have. Now, you can buff it and stretch it, and we all know that because we're music teachers but a good teacher can change a kid's attitude. And that's where you come in. And if we can change the attitude of this young person over here, we gain that talent to bring to everybody else. It's a nice spice to add. So that's how important context is. Knowledge, yeah. Wisdom is when you can take that knowledge and do something with it. So I've broken this down for you, gang into like three things that I, over these years of being a gypsy, three things I, I've looked at that go, okay, this person does this well. Now, everybody comes at it from a different angle. You know, the destination is the same, but, you know, the pathway to get there is different for everybody, right? But these things seem to be the cornerstones 
of all great music teachers. And by golly, if we ever needed to just really put it to the floor on them, this is the time. Because we're faced with new challenges. We don't have that rehearsal room that we always have. We don't have that schedule that we always have. We don't have all of those things that we counted on. But we can still build that culture. You get it? And it's happening right now with us. You know, I'd much rather be standing in front of you in a room and sharing this message than looking at a light on a computer. But we can't right now. So do we just go, let's wait till that? No, we're not going to lose that. And the reason is because we can't afford to lose time. Time is the commodity. Time is the part we can't get back. And you know, when everybody goes, all men are created equal. But not in my ear training class. I don't know about yours. You know, I sat beside a girl who had perfect pitch. So ear training for her was different than it was for me. Dictation was way different than it was for me. But the thing that equalizes all of us, that, that sort of levels the playing field, is time. It's what we do with time. And you know what? You can't save it. You can't bank it. You either use it or you lose it. And right now with this time that is coming up, we got to find a way to use it. And you're already there. That's why you're here in the first place. You're looking for one or two new wrinkles to already make better what you have decided to do for and with your students. God bless you for that. It makes a difference. So <clears throat> here's what I've noticed. We'll cut right to the chase scene here. It was in a think tank. You know what a think tank is, yeah? They put a bunch of people in the room and they say, don't come out till you have this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't come out till you have this answer. And, and it, oh boy, there were some smart people in there too. I don't know how I got in there. And <laughs> they must have had an open space or something. Anyway, anyway the, the question was, the inquiry that we were supposed to deal with was what makes a great music teacher? Well, I mean, your mind just goes out to um, a great musician, a growing, learning, becoming musician, uh, a person who has the ability to, and you go through all, and we will come out with these incredibly long, flowery answers, and then we go, no, no, it has to be simple. That's, that's way too much. Well, and compositional skills and the ability to hear, and, no, 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 no. Four, four days, four days of this. And what it came out finally was, are you ready? Drum roll, was the ability to create a trusting relationship with the students. Now that's probably applicable to any teacher, yeah? Or any boss or any leader or whatever. So the assumption is, you know, we got through music school, the assumption is that we're pretty good musicians and that we love music, that's why we did it in the first place, and that we understand the intrinsic value, you know, all that's assumed. But the great music teachers can take that and connect it to students. That's how important you are. Now, under these circumstances, the bridge to connection, a little bit different, yeah. So when I was teasing before about, you know, I'm not really a keynote speaker, I'm, I'm a storyteller. I got to share this story with, in fact, somebody said, make sure you tell the story. Now, I understand we have all different levels. So if you just change the noun, it's going to be the same everywhere. <clears throat> I was doing a, a student leadership uh, in Texas. Yeah. And, and these were all high school kids. Yeah? And so the, the, the auditorium floor is full of all these uh, quote, quote, leaders, or at least aspiring young leaders. Right. And up in the balcony were the directors. They brought their kids. I don't know how many schools were there, but there's like 300 kids there, right? So I always go through this thing. How many of you think your group could get better? Band, orchestra, choir, mariachi, dance, theater, whatever it is. Well, you know, these are the, the quote leaders. So they're, they're on it. They're ready. How many think your group could be better? Every hand's going to go up, right? Because now we're setting it up for where we're going to go. I said, how many think for your group to be better, something has to change? All the hands go up, all right? Now here comes the key question. I said, how many of you think what has to change is something you can purchase? Because what I want them to see is 
the answer is within. You can't go out and, you know, if we get new what? I don't know, risers, then we're going to sing better. Or, or if I get this new newfangled whatever is in technology, that I want to see that, wait a minute, you got to look inside yourself. So here we go. How many of you think what has to change is something you can purchase? And there's that hush in the room, right? And this hand goes up. And I'm like, oh, for heaven's sakes. And this girl's just looking at me like, are you going to call on me or not? And so I said, I said, stand up. She stood up. And I said, well, what are you in? Band orchestra? Choir? What, what, what? She goes, I'm in band. And I said, in all due respect, what could you possibly buy that would make your band better? She said, a new director. And boy, did the air go out of the room for me too. Now, my first thought was, that's a smart aleck answer. And she's just looking at me. And I said, well, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this afterwards. And I kind of just went past it because I didn't know what to say. Because you know what? She's right. So anyway, all right. So we go on. And I'm watching her during the workshop going, like, is she just being a jerk? No, she was on it. I don't think there's one time I looked at that girl, her eyes weren't locked on me. And she's taking notes and participating at a high level. So we finish, kids come around talking, and, I'm talk and she's standing there, and I started to talk to her, and she said, finish with everybody else first, which is a pretty good sign she's mature, right? She's taking care of others. So we finished, and I, and I went over to her, and, and I said, you know, I got to give you credit for saying it, but I said, it was so inappropriate. It was so untimely. And I said, how do you think your director felt when you said that? She said, my director's not here. I said, I'm sorry. She said, he's not here. Well, I said, how'd you get here? She said, my cousin lives three houses down and that puts her in a different school district. And she said, they have a phenomenal music program there and, and, and performing arts. And she said, they have the dance and they have all the theater. And, and, and she said, so when you come to town to do your leadership workshops every year, my cousin calls me and, and I come with her. And then she started to cry. And I'm talking major league sobbing. And I said, are you okay? She goes, no, I'm not okay. She said, it's my senior year and our group is going to be again. I did play this card. I said, well, maybe, maybe your cousin, they have better facilities and more. She goes, duh, 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 duh. she goes, please don't. She said, my cousin goes to the poor school. I go to the rich school. She said, we have everything we could possibly want, except a music teacher that cares. She said, if my dad would have moved four houses down, I would have had a great high school music experience. You get it? Yeah. Too bad she wasn't in your one of your groups, yeah? That's how important you are. And you know, when we get in this game of motivation and you know, how do you connect, all this sort of thing, I was, another story, I was doing a, a workshop and this was with teachers <clears throat> and we we're talking about how to motivate kids and how to get their focus and all the energy and the enthusiasm and that the inspiration that hooks them into the music so they can feel it and express themselves. And there's just one director, just, you know, a lot of eye rolling going on. I'm like, mm, mm, and everyone's like, mm -hmm, like this. So at the break, I went up to him and I said, um, clearly what I'm talking about isn't connecting with you. I said, it's not resonating with you. He goes, eh, no. He said, I, I don't motivate kids the way you do. I said, how do you motivate them? You know, share with me. He said, I just kick their butts till they get it right. I said, what if they don't get it right? He goes, a kick harder. Okay. Well, I said, we have one more session. What, what could we talk about in that session that would be relevant to you and would make a difference to you, be a bonus to you, a benefit to you? He said, I have trouble with retention. And you know what? He never put it together. Music is the culture that is safe, that is challenging, and that is encouraging. And by encouraging, I don't mean blowing sunshine. 
I mean, putting young people in the presence of courage. It, it never, never connected with him, that it had nothing to do with the music, that it was a reflection of him. I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this to you. You're never supposed to read the people. <laughs> I think it's an insult of intelligence or something like that. But I'm going to read this to you. It's Heimgenot, who arguably maybe was the best teacher there ever was. So again, this is how important you are. He writes, I have come to the conclusion that I am the decisive element in the classroom, that it's my personal approach that creates the climate, that it's my daily mood that makes the weather. I possess a tremendous power to make a life miserable or joyous. I can be a tool of torture or I can be an instrument of inspiration. I can humiliate them, or I can humor them. I can hurt them, or I can heal them. But in all situations, it will be my response that decides whether a crisis will be escalated or de-escalated, and whether a child will be humanized or dehumanized. Boy, that's a jailbreaker, isn't it? I know. Context, you a reflection of you, a mirror of you. And again, if I said, could you close your eyes and think of that music teacher that was so powerful in your life? That that's why you're here. And if you could close your eyes and envision that person, could you see somebody? I think most of us could, maybe two or three people, yeah. Again, the ability to build trusting relationships. Okay, let's go to the second one. <clears throat> I just love this. We have to realize, and I think the really good ones do this, that realize that our personalities are contagious, both bad and good. It's a great phrase that says, at every moment, whether either appreciating or depreciating the situation, like there's no in-between, there's no neutral. We're either making it better or we're pulling it back. And I know right now it would be so easy to start fussing about what's going on. But it's for all of us. What's that, what's that director said the other day? Oh, this, oh this, this is marching band for those of you who play in that game at all. He was upset because it had been raining. Now this was a couple years ago. It had been raining and raining on his group and he couldn't get outside to rehearse. And he was just, he was frantic. And I said, it only rained on you? It's raining on all of us right now. So we can either run around and talk about how wet we are, or we can figure out maybe what we can do with some of that liquid that's there. Because that's what it's going to take. You know, we're back to our friend time again. How are we going to use it? Want to know how to save some time? Two ways to save time. One, don't complain to somebody that can't fix it. Number two, don't listen to somebody complain unless you can fix it. Now, does that mean that we're not going to share stories and people listen to people? No, but we can get them to somebody who can fix it. And I just, I, I've heard so many conversations about the sky is falling and, uh, and it's like, well, why are we doing it? I mean, it's, it's, it'd be like me taking this envelope here and going, be a Chevrolet. It's not going to happen. What can happen though, is we can take what we got and move forward with it. So, what's our personality? You know, if there's ever a time that those young folks, and I'm talking about kindergarten all the way to graduate school, if there was ever a time they needed somebody to hang on to that was consistent, it's now. And you know what? If nothing else to go, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do, but we're going to get there one way or another. Hang with me. Lock arms. Let's go. They will. I know. When we talk about our personalities, you know, it's our ego that drives us, so many of us, right? It's our ego that gets the musical put together. It's our ego that, that wants to teach triplets this way or whatever. And I think a lot of it is taming that ego, that is taking that energy and going, let me take it and make it we us instead of I me. Mean. Because when you stand back and look at it, the 
difference you make in those lives is immeasurable. And please, I'm not being disparaging about any other teacher, not at all. I'm just saying that you're arguably the most powerful teacher in that student's life. Somebody said the other day, well, yeah, but like sports coaches are, if you get to play. But there's only so many that can, I don't know, be on the football field or the basketball court or the soccer team. We take everybody. Music is a place for everybody. And you know what? Once they're there, then we can teach them the hippest thing in the whole world, which is music. The one subject in the school that is expressionistic. You know, most subjects are impressionistic. The teacher gives us the information. We take the test. The closer our answers are to what the teacher said, the higher the grade, right? Music is expressionistic. It's the chance to be able to say something with notes, with a phrase, with a melody that you can't say this way or you're afraid to say this way, you know, or you don't have the vocabulary to say this way. You give them a language that allows them to share what's going on in their hearts and souls. You know, I don't want the flag to drop an impossible dream, start playing, but I'm telling you, that's pretty darn important. And when today's world where they're trying to hang on to everything they possibly can, it's you. So, okay, okay, Tim. I realize my personality is contagious. And, you know, I have bad days and I have good days. Is that what one teacher said that time? I'm just having a horrible day. It's a music teacher. I'm just having a horrible day. And I'm thinking, man, it's a good thing you aren't a surgeon. You know, it's a good thing you're an airplane pilot. <laughs> because when you get in on an airplane or you're going to have some surgery done, don't, don't you hope that doctor is having a good day? Don't you hope that pilot knows exactly what he or she's doing? Yeah. So, how do we have a good day? How does that play out? You know, how, how is it that we can just turn on a happy face? I'm not sure we can. But this is a quote that I have, I have and I've had it in, in my face forever. And some of you probably know it. It's Charles Swindoll. I think... For the cynics, they don't like this at all. But when we talk about our contagious personalities, check this out. It says, the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on my life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It's more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than successes, than what other people think or they say or they do. It's more important than appearance or giftedness or skills that will make or break a company, a church, a home, a marriage. The remarkable thing is, oh, here we go. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We can't change our past. We can't change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We can't change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on that one string that we have. That's our attitude. I'm convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We're in charge of our attitudes. So, I mean, the first obvious question is, well, Tim, if that's the case, why, why do people, why are they negative? Why are they walking around with a dark cloud over their heads. Why are they fussing all the time? Negative gets attention. And it gets lots of attention. Let's look at our own students. Who gets the attention? And you're talking to a drummer here. So <laughs> Trust me, I know how to get attention. And it's not by always doing things right. You go, well, Tim, you just can't, you just can't walk around, and just let everything go. There has to be discipline and focus. Absolutely. Let's don't get positive mixed up with happy. Positive means honest and with forward motion. Okay. 
And if there's a discipline problem or some kids are, you know, not doing what they need to be doing, just pull them out, set them down. Let's talk it through. Criticize in private, praise in public. Because if you criticize me in public and I get attention, chances are I know how to do it the next time too. I know it's hard to do because we tend to react and not always proact, guilty as charged. Nobody guiltier than Tim Lotz and Heiser on that one. But we have control of this if we want it. We can make or break a kid's life or colleagues. So I implore you, let's stand back and look at the dilemma we're in and go, I'm positive I'm going to make something work out of this. And I'm not talking to just about all that fluffy sunshine stuff. I'm talking about picking up the shovel and going into it. I got to tell you a really fast story, okay? <clears throat> I'm at SeaWorld. Okay, come with me, SeaWorld. And if you've ever been to SeaWorld and, and you watch the whole act they do, the end of it is where Shamu comes around and the guy's got the, you know, the trainer's got the rope way up above the water and Shamu flips up and goes over the, and splash and everybody gets, you know, soaked in the first 15 rows or whatever. How did they teach that multi-ton mammal to jump over that rope on command? Now you go, what's this got to do with teaching music? It's the same thing. First of all, they start with a rope in the bottom of the water. Beginners, yeah, general music, yeah. And one day Shamu swims around and goes over the rope just inadvertently. Right away, the trainer does something to let Shamu know he or she, she, I guess it's she, something right. And they throw her a fish. And Shamu goes, what did I do? What did I do? Let me try it again. Swims around, inadvertently swims over the rope, fish. Shamu goes, every time I go around this little pool, I'm going to get a fish. I'm on it. Kicks up the tempo. Now they start raising the rope. You know, key changes. <laughs> they start raising the rope. Here comes Shamu over fish. Here comes Shamu. She, now Shamu's going fast, fish, fish. All of a sudden, the rope is like middle of the water. Here comes Shamu, swims around, sees the rope and goes, wait, an obstacle submerges comes up under the rope, and what do they do? They don't do anything. They don't run electrical current through the water, or they don't kick Shamu, or they don't berate Shamu. They don't do anything. Shamu goes, what? What happened? Let me try it again. Goes around, comes under the rope, comes up, no fish. Shamu goes, I don't get it. Let me give it one more shot. You know what they do? They lower the rope. Here comes Shamaroon, here comes Shamaroon, round, goes over the rope, comes up, fish. She goes, got it, it's that rope. Something to do with that rope. Comes around, goes under the rope, comes up, nothing. Goes around again, comes over the rope, fish. She goes, okay, all I got, all I got to do is go over the rope. Okay, now they start hiking fast, round, back, right. Now it's out of the water, right? Here comes Shamu around, goes, oh, for heaven's sakes. Pops that dorsal fin back, up over splash. Lots of fish, lots of fish. Now that rope is now 12 feet in the air and Shamu, bing, over it for a fish. Now here's the good news about this. For you that are, you know, our, our teaching thing. How do we get more done in less time? When they put the new Shamu in to train it, they leave the old Shamu there. And they talk whale talk, bing, 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 all this sort of thing. And the and Shamu, the old Shamu says to the new one, says, you're not going to believe this. There's a human up there, and the, he's going to be holding the rope up. And if you go around and jump over that rope, he'll give you a fish. And the new Shamu goes, no way. He goes, yeah, honestly, follow me, role modeling. Our students, oh, they're so important as leaders. So she goes, just watch me first time. Goes around, the young Shamu's like, no. Old Shamu's up, over, boom, boom, fish. She says, you can do it too. Young one goes, oh, I don't know. Yeah, let's do it together. And when they go around, she said, just push that dorsal fin back. And up over they go, lots of fish. You know, that's what we do. When we feed what's going right, it increases. Unfortunately, the corollary is true too. When we feed negative, it increases. This is our life we're talking about. 
you have chosen, somebody said, the profession of music teaching, I don't know, made the mission of music teaching. It's pretty neat, isn't it? Okay, so we got trusting relationships, we, and the good ones understand their personality is contagious. Here's the last one. It's going to sound so silly when I say it, but hang with me. And if, if this may be more important now than it has ever been. The great music teachers have the ability to create what isn't. You're like, damn, what does that mean? That didn't even sound right. To create what isn't. Give me an example, Tim. You might take a new job in a school and you go in and what isn't is a great general music program in that elementary school. You create it. Maybe what isn't in that middle school is a great schedule for the kids so they can have music and you create it. Maybe, maybe you go into that high school orchestra and, and the discipline is horrible and the room is a mess and you create what isn't. You put it back together. You know, great athletes, they make a lot of money because they can do what isn't. You go, what are you talking about? That really great quarterback can make a lot of money by putting the ball where it isn't in the end zone. To take that basketball and throw it through the hoop where it hasn't been, it goes, and you go, oh, Tim, that's just, that sounds silly. No, no. To create what isn't. Look around you. What isn't? We're all familiar with um, Harold Hill. Yeah, the music man. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? And, you know, you all know the story. I'm, I don't need to repeat the story for you, right? <clears throat> he goes into town, and, and he's, he's a scam artist, right? He's a charlatan. But he convinces them all. He should have been a music teacher. He convinces the whole town that they need a band, right? And he's going to do this. Now, his, his MO is he goes in, he sells them the instruments. Whoop, out of town, he goes with the money, you know, and they're stuck with all these instruments. But of course, you remember, he falls in love with the librarian. And so he doesn't want to leave the town. And so now, not only do they get the instruments, they get the uniforms. And everybody keeps waiting for him to, you know, let's have the concert. Let's see what our kids are doing. And he's convinced all the people that their kid has to be in that band. And the librarian, who is also the town music teacher, figures out he doesn't know what he's doing she falls in love with him and if you remember at the end you know he's standing in front of there and they got the tar and feathers and and she's like oh this is it it's over with and they said to him if you're so good and and you, you're the real thing make that band play and remember remember what he, did? he turned to me he goes we're using the think system <laughs> whatever that was and he drops that baton and this cacophony of sound comes out that it's it's horrible. And I'm like, no. But then you go behind the eyes of the parents and they hear 76 trombones and they see the band marching down the street. He created, what is it? Was he a charlatan? Really? Well, wasn't a good musician. Didn't know what he was doing. But he gave those people hope. You know, boy, if there's a time we need it, isn't it now? So one more review, and again, you're great at this, to create trusting relationships. And those of you that have these magnificent programs, you do it each and every day. And you don't just create them, you feed them, right? You water that plant. You don't water the weeds, you water the flowers. And then absolutely, to realize who you are, makes such a difference contextually in how the students learn from us. Ms. Sellers, you couldn't walk down the hallway of that school that she wouldn't call you by first name or walk in the cafeteria and she'd say your name. How you doing? Nice shirt, Tim. Don't forget to practice. So when we stand back and look at the great ones, 
you have got one other secret weapon that I'm not sure other teachers have. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to make this silly at all, but when parents, I mean, the, the, the information folks, as you well know, that's out there about the, the benefits that come from learning music and making music. I mean, no parent can read that advocacy information and not insist their child be in music. You just can't, unless you're just not a good parent because everything that music does lifts them to a higher level. Now I want them there for music. I'm a music. I want them there for music. I want them to feel what it's like to, to play an instrument or to sing or to have that, to have that chance to hear that gorgeous sound around them and just be wrapped in it. That's why Tim wants them there. But there's other reasons too. And you go, well, don't sell it. Don't sell it with that stuff. Well, if that makes sense to parents, I'm going to sell them anything I can to make sure the child is in there because I can't teach them music unless they're there. So if I need to show a principal that the highest level of attendance is my music students, bingo, that's going to help the principal. If test scores are a big deal and you, all you got to do is go through your group and go, you know, let's get your test scores. They're going to be higher than everybody else's. And then, and then the cynics go, well, that's because all the smart kids are in music and it's not true. What is true is once they join music, they become the smart kids. There's all of the data out there to show that. What parent is going to say no when they really understand what you bring to the table? My last story. <laughs> You're like, oh, thank heaven, Stim. <coughs> now, for those of you who, who aren't in the band field, just stay with me. And particularly for those of you marching band, <laughs> just stay with me. Several years ago, I was... Uh, in Houston, Texas, and it was a marching band event. And my job at those events is to get the band on the field and get them started and the salute from the drum major and all that and help the parents. And so, oh, it was so hot that day. I just remember it so hot. <laughs> so I'm getting everything, you know, set up and, and I'm running over to get the parents and the marimbas are coming on and all this. And there was this one dad that was just running around out of control. He had a timpani yeah, and he's like, oh, I don't know where to put the drum on. I'm like, stop, 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 stop. He said, well, if I put it on the line and they get a penalty, just stop. You're okay. Just set it right there. Put the other drums around. And I said, stand back here. You're fine. And he was just shaking. And I said, son, daughter, what? He goes, oh, it's my son. He's a percussionist. He goes, I'm just I'm so upset. Oh, he said, I don't want to do anything wrong. I said, it's going to be fine. Are you an official? Sure, I'll be anything you want me to be right now. I said, just stand back here. Enjoy your son's performance. So I walk across the field to, and the director of the band is standing there and he's just laughing. He said, Tim, do you know who you were talking to? And I said, yeah, it's one of your band dads over here. He said, that's Lieutenant Colonel Lindsay. He's the next astronaut that's going up in the shuttle. And I'm like, what? He's an astronaut. He goes, yeah. And I said, he doesn't know where to put the drum. <laughs> Well, I had never met an astronaut before. So after it's over with, I'm running back because I can get his autograph. Yeah. And he's running and I'm running and we're running towards each other. And he leaps in the air and I just caught him. <laughs> I set him down and he's crying. He's just tears. And I said, you okay? And he goes, that's the most beautiful thing I ever saw. And I said, you're Lieutenant Colonel Lindsay. He goes, yeah. I said, what are you doing out here? <laughs> A lot of money invested in you. He said, I'm doing the most important thing in my life. I'm supporting my kid. Oh, my God. Had nothing to do with astronaut. Had nothing to do with all his achievements. He's supporting his kid. That's the magic card we have. Because we will give them what they want, what the parents want more than anything else, success for their child. I know. So again, I just think it's so neat that, that you were here for that Moving Forward Together conference. And congratulations to Jim and his staff and all the people who put it together for us. I mean, there's another example of creating what isn't. So, ready? One more time. Trust relationships, right? Realizing your personality is contagious and creating what isn't. We get that little trifecta in place, we're gonna be in good shape. So when we started here about 
40 minutes ago. I said, most of, are here, most of us are here because of a music teacher. And I ask you to envision that teacher in your mind. Do you think they knew how important they were to you at that time? I don't know. I think they're just teaching, getting ready for the concert, whatever it is. But trust me, in 10 years, that same question will be asked to a bunch of music teachers. They said, can you see the teacher in your mind? that made the difference in your life. And many of them will see you. And you are so important right now. They need you right now. Because music's gonna live regardless what happens. So I'm counting on you. And they're counting on you. And most of all, we're counting on each other. Solidarity has gotta be our friend right now. So again, thanks to all my friends there. Most of all, thanks to you. <sighs> We'll take a deep breath and head in tomorrow and see what's there. All right. Blessings.